Welcome back everyone. So we are closing in on the finale of the sixth season of The Blacklist. There are a lot of questions that are still pending that still need to be answered. Like for example, is Katarina alive? And if she's alive, where in the hell is she? Now my answer to that one or my prediction as to that one is she's still alive. We've only got two episodes left. One is all about, you know, Anna McMahon and the other one is all about President Diaz. So I'm not 100% certain that they are going to address this question over the course of what remains of this season. So yeah, it's probably something for the next season, or as per the usual, with the end of every season, we're going to get a cliffhanger, and it's going to have a lot to do with Katarina. But nonetheless, the other question over here, and the one that I'm going to try to answer, you know, from my perspective, once again, not confirming anything, is whether or not the Ilya reveal, you know, the one that we got last week, is actually true, or actually final. Because it is true, by the way. I mean, this happened. Ilya did take the persona of none other than Raymond Reddington. But what happened after that? Is he still Ilya? Is this Raymond Reddington someone else? Alright, so there's a chance that he is Ilya. There is a chance that this guy that we saw on last week's episode, you know, the one who was in love with Katarina, seemed to have been trained by her father as well, is actually the very person that is Raymond Reddington today. I mean, that's a possibility. And I know, a lot of people are gonna be like, no, 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 there are so many discrepancies, there's so many contradictions. But in the end, the only scenario that's gonna make a lot of sense is the scenario that, well, Raymond Reddington is actually Raymond Reddington. He's no imposter, nothing of the sort. So we are gonna need to be a little bit flexible when it comes to different options and different possibilities here. But okay though, that's one scenario that's been presented to us, but there's the other scenario. That other scenario, the only scenario that remains acceptable to me is that Raymond Reddington is actually Raymond Reddington. And yeah, all that happened with Ilya still did happen with Ilya, you know, he went ahead, he became Raymond Reddington, but only for a while, before the real Raymond Reddington came around and kind of ripped him a new one. Okay, let's see how that would work. Number one, on this week's episode, he does talk to Liz about trust. You know, that entire talk about not being able to trust her, not being able to forgive her, but at the same time, not being able to kill her. Now, there are three good reasons why he would do that. Number one, he is Ilya. He wanted to keep his word. He's this nice guy. He's this amazing guy. He still loves Katarina and he's doing all of this out of love for Katarina. So he kind of has to not kill her daughter. But then again, there's a limit to all of this. There's a threshold that you're going to be able to take before you're like, you know, the hell with this. I'm just going to deal with her. But there's also number two. He is Raymond Reddington. He is the father. And a father, a normal father that is, could possibly not trust his kids, could possibly not be able to forgive his kids, especially if they betray him, while he's always trying to protect them, but he's never gonna be able to kill them. That's something that fathers don't usually do. Now, I'm fond of the silliness, and I'm sure someone is gonna decide to be silly in the comments and go, hey, if he's a psychopath, he would do it. Yes, that is the exception to the rule, but not really the rule. And that's basically what distincts him from the Ilya theory. I mean, Ilya would have probably ended up being fed up with it and decided, the hell with this girl, I'm just gonna get rid of her. At the very least, that's what I think he'd do. But in, in full honesty, there is also option number three, and I hate this one, I totally dislike it, I totally hate it if it happened, and I don't think it's happening. I'm not subscribing to this theory, but nonetheless, the only other option that would make sense, you know, someone who would not forgive her or not be able to forgive her at a certain point or be able to trust her as well, but nonetheless could not kill her, that would be Katerina Rostova. Now, my statement over here means that she's the only other one who would do that, who would not try to kill her or not want to kill, you know, Elizabeth Keene. But nonetheless, that doesn't mean that I do think that she is Raymond Reddington. I don't think at this point in the events of the series, it is possible to make him into Katarina. I don't think the writing is going to end up being that shitty, and I sure hope that is not the case in the end. But let us circle back, though, to the idea that the Raymond that we do see on the series is actually the real Raymond Reddington. Naval officer, lover of Katarina, betrayed by Katarina, ended up being replaced by Ilya Kozlov, and ended up taking his place back, and of course, father of Elizabeth Keene. Now, two questions keep coming to mind here. One, was Raymond Reddington's death ever confirmed? And two, why do we have bones with Raymond Reddington's DNA? Okay, so we've met the alchemist before, and we've established so far that the DNA could have been altered. 
We've also established that the DNA of Raymond Reddington is not part of any database, because even when Cooper tried to test Lizzie's DNA against Raymond's DNA, he had to pull an old shirt out of evidence. So how did anyone ever get Raymond Reddington's DNA in order to test the DNA of those bones against? Besides that, the only one who seems to have ever known what the secret of these bones happened to be, happened to be Mr. Kaplan. And Kate Kaplan never told anyone, not a single person, even Tom. She just left him the bones, but never told him whose bones they are, never told him where to look. Now let us use a little hypothetical over here. You dug up some bones, you want to figure out who those bones belong to, what would you do? Now bear in mind as well that you were given no clues as to who those bones belong to. So would you go test them against a database, you know, until you get a match, or would you just go test them against a specific person, when you actually think that person is alive and, you know, you only discover that these bones belong to him after you get a match? I think there is no good reason to assume that Raymond is not Raymond until you actually test the bones and then you get a match. Now, if that were to be the case and there was no actual DNA in a database that you can test against, then you shouldn't have gotten a match if these bones do belong to Raymond. Now, I'm not just saying this to kind of discard the idea that, you know, they couldn't have tested the bones because I'm going to assume over here that they were able to test the bones, but I'm also saying it because we should know that there will always be discrepancies. I mean, the entire event that led us to believing that this guy is an imposter does have one big plot hole to its name. There was no DNA in a database to check against and no idiot in a sane mind would go check the DNA of some bones against the DNA of a person who is actually out there and alive and DNA as well that he's got no access to. Now I'm gonna assume over here that by some magical twist of fate one they decided hey we should check these bones against the DNA of that guy whom we know is alive, Raymond Reddington. And two, they had their hands on his DNA, again, a magical twist of fate. Now we've met the Alchemist on the first season of the series, we know what the Alchemist can do. We know that he can change the DNA and the dental records of people, the dental records part being the most interesting part over here, because the entire DNA test was done on those bones using a single tooth. It might be a coincidence, I do agree, I know you want to say that so badly in the comments, but it might be a coincidence, but it also might not be, and we gotta take this detail into consideration, no matter how little it is, and no matter how much we want Red to be Ilya, or Katarina, or anyone for that matter. Now the other question though that's being posed here is whether or not he's ever been announced dead, and the answer is yes by the way, kind of yes, we're not really sure yet. Now everyone seems to have seen Katarina walking into the ocean, but it seems from last week's episode that she never died, that's what we've been saying for a while, a lot of us actually, not just me, a lot of fans have been saying Katarina is not dead, we've never seen a body for Raymond Reddington either, so the very same rule might apply and he just might not be dead. Now on last week's episode there was this entire conversation between Ilya and Katarina, you know, all about trying to save him, maybe if we would have left him for the firefighters instead of pulling him out of the fire, oh he would have burned, but I keep thinking about it, maybe he wouldn't have died. Okay, that's what Katarina says over there. However though, they do seem to have pulled him far enough, tried to possibly resuscitate him, but nonetheless they completely failed at it. And in situations like this, especially if you're not a doctor and if things are going completely bad, there's a good chance that you never actually checked, you never actually made sure that you either did survive or ended up dead. Now as opposed to a lot of people who would use, you know, the marks on his back, the scars on his back from the night of the fire in order to prove that he might be red, I'm not gonna do that. Ilya was definitely part of the fire, he went in there, he dragged Raymond Reddington out, according to last week's episode, and probably ended up being burnt and scarred and whatnot. But yeah though, if we don't see a body, it might not mean that the person is definitely alive, but it also doesn't mean that he's definitely dead. Now one very interesting thing about last week's episode is it was actually during the time that Red died, like right after his death or alleged death. So they could have just invested like 5 to 10 minutes in the death of Red, you know, the very scene, but they didn't do that, they didn't even try. But the other thing that we know out of all of this is that we never saw the face of the guy in the banks at the end of last week's episode. Now let me be honest once again, there might be a good reason for all of this. We didn't see the face of Ilya Kozlov on last week's episode in the banks because they didn't want to spend much on the CG to basically DH James Spader for those scenes. I mean after all this season the show is a Friday night show which means that it has a lower budget and not just compared to other shows airing during weekdays except for Friday and Saturday. 
but also when compared to other weekdays when it used to air, you know, before it moved to Friday. The other option, though, is they didn't want us to see the face because it wouldn't be the face of the Raymond Reddington that we know so far on the series. But finally, though, we've got the most wanted list, you know, the list on which Raymond Reddington is basically number one, and we've got Raymond Reddington. We've got the younger version of Raymond Reddington, the younger version of James Spader, and that picture for Raymond Reddington has probably been taken out of his file back when he was in the Navy, and this person is basically the very same person. So, if Ilya was transformed into this person that we know today as Raymond Reddington, why would he find the need when talking to the manager of the bank to tell them that he's basically needed to go through some transformation, some facial changes, in order to evade law enforcement? I mean, he does look like Raymond Reddington, so that wouldn't make any kind of sense. But okay, and to sum up and to present you with my scenario over here, yes, Ilya did become Raymond Reddington, or tried to become Raymond Reddington. Raymond Reddington was not dead, they thought he was dead, but he wasn't really dead. He came back, he tried to claim back his life, tried to get everything back to normal, realized that that wasn't possible, so the very next decision that he made was to go after Ilya and to go after Katerina. He now feels betrayed, he now feels lied to, and he wants revenge. Besides that, on last week's episode, Ilya did seem a little bit shady. He seemed to try to evade the topic of Raymond Reddington as much as possible, or just try to shut Katerina up by telling her something around the lines of, we did our best. Every time she talked about it, it was, we did our best. Maybe not these exact words, not every single time as well, but nonetheless, words to the same effect. But anyway though, Raymond did that, Raymond found their way back and they found out that he was alive, he went after Katerina, he went after Ilya, Katerina made an escape for it, but Raymond was still able to get his revenge from Ilya. Now moving forward from that point, he did create the duffel bag of bones, the bones were Ilya's, Raymond had his bones altered, you know, Ilya's bones, in order to make sure he's got a get out of jail free card, or for some reason, whatever the reason is. He went on his way, built an empire, and then at some point realized that his daughter might be in danger, just because of the fact that she is his daughter and that of Katerina's. But yeah, right now I'm thinking of this scenario next to the Ilya scenario, so it's either Ilya or Raymond Reddington, but it cannot be Katerina, and it cannot be someone else as well. It wouldn't make any kind of sense to give us this reveal, and then reveal later on that he's neither Raymond, nor is he Ilya, and go for someone completely different. That would just be prolonging the story, making it annoying, making it boring. But that being said though, my work here is done, so let me know in the comments down below what you think of the situation. Do you think the reveal of Ilya was actually the real deal, or do you think he's someone else? If so, let me know who you think he is. Hopefully you do think he would be Reddington. Let me know as well if you did like this video by dropping it a much appreciated like, subscribing to this channel and make sure you enable notifications for this channel in order to get updated when I upload a video, publish a community post or start a live stream. But until the next time that you tune in for another one of my videos, The Blacklist or otherwise, thank you so much for tuning into this one and have a great day.